Okay, I'm calling this video The U.S. Civil War by Mark Simonich, Seven Years Later. Why seven years later? Well, because in 2015, I reviewed the game, the video, and I gave it masterpiece status. I thought the game was terrific. And I've given that review to only three games in my collection, or games that I've played. The first was Republic of Rome, done by Avalon Hill. The second one was Empire of the Sun by GMT. And, of course, this one, The U.S. Civil War by Mark Simonich. A game that I call Masterpiece Status, and I still call it a masterpiece, seven years later. Now, I'm going to point out a little bit of the history of the game and my experience with it. When it came out in 2015, the rules were in one booklet. And the main change they've done for the August 2021 edition is to divide the rules into two booklets, the standard game and the advanced naval rules. And this was a very good decision. The only other major change was in the 1861 setup cards, particularly for the Union, but the Confederates were affected to some degree also. Major changes were made in Missouri and especially in West Virginia for the placement of General McClellan and so on. These were uh, subtle changes, but they made the game much better. Because as we came to know, the 1861 campaign uh, was not thoroughly um, play tested. And in the two staff games that followed, I was in those. So I was actually the Union commander in the second staff game, taking the war for about two years when I resigned. Um, and that's a whole different story in itself. But the staff game did point out some tweaks that should have been done. And with the help of Jim Dauphiné, kind of like the chief developer for the game, they came up with this third edition. And uh, you can download these uh, as PDF files. I highly recommend you upgrade your game if you have not already done so. One of the things I'd like to talk about is what I call the politics of turn zero. In other words, where were the commanders before the game even starts? Well, as I read biographies of McClellan and Robert E. Lee and others, uh, I just found it interesting as to where the commanders were. For example, McClellan was uh, a president of a railroad in Cincinnati when war began. Robert E. Lee, when the war began, was way off in Texas you can imagine Robert E. Lee's journey to Richmond. Kind of interesting. He had to travel a confederacy that was in evolution. Not all the states had even seceded. Leaders like Hancock and Armistead were in California. In other words, these leaders were scattered all over the place. And it's interesting to see where they appear on turn one, turn two, turn three. That kind of thing. One might ask, where's General Grant on turn one? Well, on turn one... Grant is in Galena, Illinois, up in this vicinity here, I believe. I don't know if uh, Galena is not exactly shown on the map, but um, he wasn't even a colonel uh, when the war began. And uh, he actually went to Cincinnati and uh, waited in McClellan's office for employment, but uh, um, kind of was snubbed by McClellan or his application fell through the cracks, you might say. So I just find it interesting to see where the commanders were in turn one. But I'm getting off topic. What's, what's changed in the new version? Well, mainly those setup cards, as I mentioned, and uh, putting the advanced naval rules into a separate booklet. Now, the additions and changes were indicated by this, uh, I think these are called ampersands. I call it little squiggly marks. Whenever you see this uh, indicator in the rules, it shows it's a new or greatly revised rule. So you don't have to read the whole booklet again. It's virtually the same game as the original one, but they've tweaked the 1861 setup. And like I said, West Virginia and um, Missouri are now quite different, much more historical. Because for all intents and purposes, um, 
West Virginia, which I traveled in, by the way, a few years ago, visiting all the obscure battlefields in that state, like uh, Rich Mountain and Carnifex Ferry and Droop Mountain. They were all in this vicinity here. There's uh, Philippi, which I went to also, Grafton, of course. And uh, when the game starts, McClellan starts at Grafton with one SP. And the state is almost virtually in the Union. The Confederates will be hard-pressed to get West Virginia back into the Confederacy. And that's a lot closer to the situation the way it was. Now, I've been playing the game solidly since 2015, so I've got seven years of experience with it now, playing a lot of games with friends on Vassal, too. Not a lot of time for face-to-face -face play because this, as I mentioned before, is at least a 20-hour game. So my playing is uh, very much on Vassal, which um, I really enjoy. But we'll conclude the video pretty soon. It doesn't need to be a long video, just to let you know that there is a third edition out there. It's very fine, and I still think it's one of the best Civil War games out there. But to cut to the chase, in the seven years of playing, I do not play with the advanced naval rules. I play the standard game. I find the standard game actually better than the uh, advanced naval rules. I just don't find the advanced naval rules give you anything that gives you a better simulation. It slows the game down considerably and doesn't give you much more. I don't even agree with the fact that there's a free naval move every single turn. It overemphasizes amphibious in the game. And it actually makes the cards, which come with the game, almost less important because there's a free naval move every turn. So it's not as critical. And I find in the standard game, cards are much more important. So you can also avoid these incredible uh, moving batteries that the Confederacy have, where they can move a battery thousands of miles across the country uh, with no penalty at all. Um, if anybody could mention to me a Confederate amphibious assault in the Civil War, I would love to read about it because I don't know of any. Now, they are limited in this game. They can only do it with one SP, and you don't see it too often. But otherwise, it's just, I don't know. The naval rules were tacked on later uh, because, you know, people want their naval rules. And I'm a naval guy. And it'd be wrong to say that the standard game doesn't have naval rules. It does. The blockade is still important. But you don't have these fiddly little ironclad counters that all they do is modify the land combat anyway. And I just don't think they're worth the bother. So that's my conclusion for the U.S. Civil War by Mark Samanich, done by GMT in 2015. And with third edition rules available at no cost, download them, uh, in the August of 2021. So this is still my favorite U.S. Civil War game and probably my favorite war game of all time. Thank you for watching.